Welcome everyone, welcome. Welcome to another episode of Son of Elijah. My name is Mac the Lion and I'm your host for this program. We continue our series, our new series on mythical Babylon. I started the other day explaining the visionary encounter that I had when I went to the throne room of God about 70 days ago. And in that encounter, I was with the very essentiality of the life of God, popularly called the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God showed me things and spoke to me specifically concerning son of Elijah. The son of Elijah's mandate is to clean up the church. And then she gave me a wipe and I was doing a wipe down. And then when I turned to look at the white clarity of cloth I was using for the wipe down, it was stained with black ash. And that black ash, I saw it as death, as it were, or the spirit of death, which is powered by the spirit of hell, which is executed or expressed by the spirit of the grave. And then as I saw that, I knew specifically that the church was dusty, that the church had been invaded, that the church is being manipulated. Not all of the church, not every section of the church, but a certain section of the church. In a separate encounter that I had in 2021, I was shown in a vision, the father showed me that 20% of the church was corrupt. 20% of the church is corrupt. So my mission out son of elijah is to accomplish this now son of elijah is not a person but it's a job description it's a mandate and i'm just privileged by god to have received this mandate and with this mandate i'm able to run after the path of accomplishing that which the lord has scheduled for me in order for me to reach the zenith of that which god has created and called me for so that i can get to the centrality of that which the lord has designated specifically for me to accomplish for the church now you must understand that the church is made up of the spirit of Christ, is made up of the body of Christ, and is made up of the mind of Christ. The spirit of Christ is the workings of God in the spirit of man. The body of Christ is the workings of God in the physicality of men amongst those who have been saved and sanctified in Christ Jesus. And of course, the mind of Christ is the workings in the soul of man and those workings are being executed even via the spirit of the living God. So now today I want to expand on that which the Lord has showed me clearly by that encounter that I had and it's very important as we get ready for the things that God is getting ready to do with our lives. Number one, mythical Babylon. What is a myth? A myth is a fable wherein the truth of God's word has now been mutilated or hijacked by someone who claims to be of God, claims to have an authentic encounter with God. And then that person does not understand there is a spirit of falsehood that has hijacked their spiritual gifts. And as a result of that, they are now twisting scripture and mutilating the scripture and now inverting the scripture to say something it doesn't say to bring knowledge to a place where it does not deliver what is meant to deliver and then to now change the glory of God into the corrupted nature of mankind or man so that by the time they listen, the things they are listening to does not carry the fidelity and the integrity of that which it was originally designated for. And as a result of that, these individuals are fablers and these fablers are teaching myths in the church. They are the ones that are called mythical Babylon. An easy word to use is simply false teachers because they are being powered by the spirit of falsehood. And a lot of that is becoming very prevalent in the church and is multiplying every single day and is making things even worse. And a lot of people are confused simply because of the things they are presenting. And because some of these people don't know any better, they do not know that they are listening actually to a snake 
or a snaky spirit that has mutilated the truth of God's word and now bringing them to a place of accelerated manipulative destruction that seeks to make sure that they miss out in God, that their names will not end up in the Lamb's book of life. And if it is there already, it will be depleted and it will now be taken away. And eventually they miss out on their salvation. Remember what Jesus spoke to that church when he was talking about the church that in the book of Revelation chapter 2 he said I have one problem with you you have allowed that woman Jezebel mystery Babylon to teach you see to teach means to bring myths into the church to teach my people how to what eat things that are sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. So they were bringing in teachings that were bringing in swift damnation to the people, corrupting them, telling them there's nothing really wrong with all this immoral behavior, fornicatory behavior, sexual indulgences with individuals they are not married to, trying as much as possible to create their own way out because they themselves are struggling and have failed in specific areas of discipline and as a result of that they are not taking the truth and they are not trying to sell it they are not trying to purport it they are not trying to push it with an agenda all because they have failed in their originality in God and now they have become mythical individuals who are teaching fables and things that are not in line and then we go to the second dimension of this assignment which the Lord said to get the rats out of the church to get the rats out of the church these are the rodents that come in to feast upon the deprecated characteristics that now became as a result of the bad behavior and the sinful practices based out of this fabled teachings these wrong teachings these mutilated teachings these teachings that are not rooted in the word of god these teachings that are tries to lay another foundation aside from the originality of the foundation that has been given in as the bible makes it very clear in first corinthians chapter 3 that no one should try and lay any other foundation aside from the foundation that has originally been laid in christ jesus which was done on the fundamental principles of the apostolic and the prophetic prophetic offices which God takes them through a very strenuous process in order to qualify them to give them this truth for which that truth now becomes a fundamental principle from which our faith and our Christianity strides by and you have to understand that the understanding of this revelation is what will bring them to a place where they are able to stand by the word of the living God but when they do not they now, you know, they will not turn aside onto vain janglings, as the Bible calls it. And as a result of that, they become heretic. They listen to things that are born out of lies and falsehood, and they are not able to accomplish the centrality of what God has scheduled for them. And as a result of these failures, they are not able to reach the zenith of what the Lord has truly created for them. And then those practices or behaviorals that is coming from the mutilated corrupted compromises of believing a lie that has tried to erode the foundations of their faith that in itself produces corruption and the corrupted byproduct is what the rodents come into the church to come and eat and as a result of that the rodents are now multiplying themselves in the church and creating problems because of all the lies and falsehoods that has been pushed and pandered and purloined and generated by the individuals that are popularly called mythical Babylon. And these are false teachers. And then the third mandate and instruction for the son of Elijah is to get those prisoners out. The Bible talks about Satan. He said he never lets his prisoners go. If you go to also Nahum chapter 3 verse 1, it talks about there's a bloody city in the belly of the great waters. And that city, the prey cannot escape. The prey cannot break free because they are prisoners. They are prisoners who are bound. They are prisoners who are held down. They are prisoners who are failing. They are prisoners who are not excelling at all so that by the strength of God we are able to break yokes we are able to destroy 
the yokes that have clamped them down, the chains that are holding them down, and we're able to set them free. We're able to remove those hindrances. We're able to get them out of the prison houses because the wisdom of God told me you need to go after the prisoners and get them out of the prison houses. You need to go after the prison houses and get the prisoners out. That was what the wisdom of God told me clearly in this encounter. And then with that three, I understood it. And then there was one other thing wherein there was an individual who was trying to portray that he's also there already ahead of us and he's doing the assignment that he's meant to do, which is to expose these false teachers, these mythical Babylonians teaching these principles that they are everywhere. And this individual had more than a million subscribers on YouTube. He was big time. His videos go viral many a times in different platforms and he's pushing and riding this thing and thinks that he's doing the right thing. But what he doesn't know is that by sticking to the things he's talking about, neither being sent nor authorized, neither understanding what he's teaching, not able to slice out because he's just a doctrinal defender. That's what I, I noticed, that he's a doctrinal defender. He's just simply castigating these individuals because they did not come from their own wing of an evangelical movement or did not come from their own wing of denominational inclinations, did not come from the way they were raised or brought up and now they label them very very quickly as false teachers, false preachers, falsifiers, and these individuals are multiplying. And because the YouTube channel likes it, as it were, the algorithm likes it, because a lot of people have itchy ears, they like what they are hearing, they want to hear more, they tune to their channel, and then many more are subscribing. And now because there's an explosive rate of individuals who are going to listen to this, and then at the end of the day, these individuals have made their pedestal and their mark in that community, in the social media, and then when people People are confused about what is going on they do not hesitate to go to them because these guys already have the ready-made answer and for one reason they know what they are doing for one reason they are already up there for one reason they are exposing they seem to know have all the answers they, they will point out every single one of them and they'll tell you this one is a false teacher this is a false teacher these are falsifiers and there is one thing that i discovered about these individuals they will never not a single one of them would ever come out and tell you clearly when god told them to do this thing never they will only tell you that scripture says we you expose them. You quoting scriptures, you have not answered the question because the scriptures that you are quoting were spoken to specific people in the Bible. People that had encounter, be it Peter, be it Paul, whoever they were, they had encounters and God showed them specific things. But you don't start an assignment with that. No. Because that assignment was given to Paul and to Peter. It wasn't given to you. Your name is not there. What did God tell you? Like, for example, I just started by telling you I have a mandate. The mandate is from God. It is called Son of Elijah. And I, then I told you that I had an encounter with God. I had an encounter with, with beings like Elijah himself. I had an encounter with the archangel, Gabriel. I had an encounter with two archangels in the presence of cherubims and seraphims. And then based on that, they were the ones who said Son of Elijah. And then I gave all those understandings, everything that I had encounters with. And then of recent, I said about 70 days ago, I had an encounter with the wisdom of God with the very wisdom of God also known as the oracle of God and by having that encounter this was what she told me specifically I needed to do in order to line up perfectly with the mandate that belongs to the Father and the Son of God and the Holy Spirit the Godhead is the one who minted it the Godhead is the one who gave me this assignment the Godhead is the one who told me these things but I started firstly by saying this is what they told me to do now after that I now go to scriptures and then I start reading scriptures so this scriptures is not where I start from because you must always start with life. You must start with Rema. You must start with what God told you. Did God tell you? If God told you, give us a time. Give us a timeline. Give us a date that God appeared to you and told you specifically that these people are falsifiers and that he has called you right now to expose them. But you know the funny thing? You don't have a date. You don't have such an encounter. It doesn't exist. And that's why you are in judgment. That's why you are in danger. That's why you are playing with flame. That's why you are playing with dangerous explosives and don't even know what you are doing. It, just because you are able to put together a million itchy ears to listen to your classifications and exposures doesn't make it right. You are playing with explosives and don't even know. You are toying with fire and you are playing with explosives and you don't even know. 
and because the YouTube community likes it doesn't make it right. That is not how you know what is of God. You are playing with dangerous substance because based on what I'm shown, I have seen clearly. Now, I didn't seek for that individual to be there at that time. The encounter that I had with the wisdom of God, I didn't seek that individual to be there. It was not me looking for a YouTube guy with a million subs to be there. It was not my intent. I went there. In short, I was called there to come and have an encounter with the wisdom of God and present how far I have gone with the assignment. And then I started talking about my assignment and the message and the fact that I was doing this and that. And then I was talking about the algorithm. I was talking about the, the number of subscribers and I was saying, oh, the analytics is not showing that the impact is really there. And she said, don't pay attention to that. That doesn't matter. Because at this point in time, we are not working towards duplicating the content to the uttermost part of the earth. At this point, we are still producing a prototype. And since we are still producing a prototype, the quality of the substance is what we are paying very close attention to. And so she told me to not pay attention to the analytics at this point in time. I should pay attention to that which is the content. And then she now told me, based on where you are, and then she now started explaining to me, this is the exactness of what I want you to do with Son of Elijah. Son of Elijah is a mandate that is given exclusively to clean up the church. It is to go after mythical Babylon. It is to go after the rodents that are roaming in the church, that are eating and feasting away at the corruption that has now become the fundamental compromises that the mythicians or the mythical Babylonians have unleashed upon the body of Christ. So we are meant to get the rodents out and then clean out the church as a result. And then last but not the least, you must remember there are people that are chained and bound with these lies. And then you must go in there and set them free. That is the assignment of son of Elijah. And so when that was told me, I had to now look at it and say, okay, if this is the assignment, then I need to sit down and then rationalize and muse over and then decipher how I'm going to approach this because this is serious work this is serious assignment and I don't play with God I will never come to God and pretend like as if I didn't hear him no I heard him very carefully what he wants is what he wants what he has mandated is what he has mandated and since I was the one by God's mercy who won that mandate of the principle that I'm now running with which is the mandate of son of Elijah so I'm now the one who is meant to take that which the mandate has given and now try and break it up now unfortunately there are people and they are all over the internet, they are all over social media and they are all over YouTube. These individuals have put themselves in a place where they are trying to resolve or decipher the falsifiers and they don't have the credentials, they don't have the training, they don't have the exposure, they don't have the mandate. This thing can only be exposed by fire. Remember what Paul said, everyone should pay attention to what they are building here. He said because if you upon this foundation, no one can lay any new foundation and after that you can build on top of it but what you are building is either brick what you are building is either gold, what you are building is either silver, what you are building is either stubble, that what you are building is either hay, whatever you are building, please take note that fire is coming. And when fire comes, it will try. What is that fire? The fire is the prophetic anointing that exposes the fundamental foundational structure to prove whether something is of God or not. So God is sending the flame of his fire through the apostolic and the prophetic mandate that will check that foundation and that fire will break out from beneath and from there it will engulf the building and then try out everything everyone is building on top of it. Now there are those who will find out they are making mistakes. God will show them and some of them will refrain. But there are others who are hardcore because they are already getting paid out by YouTube. Because they are already getting paid out and so supported by the large number of people who listen to their materials because they are already getting paid out by the large numerics of people who have itchy ears and enjoying them castigate and try and say these ones are whatever these ones are doing what is wrong and these ones are not all these people are involved in all these things you have to understand that these individuals are playing with fire they're playing with grenades pulling out the pin and returning it and don't know what they are doing these things are extremely dangerous i will give you another example in 2018, I was staying somewhere and a lady came to me because I know her. She's like a protege to me. And then she came and said, oh, did you hear what so and so person did? There's something trending right now. And I said, what is that all about? So I started listening to her. And then she played a video of a certain man who did, uh, you know, names of false prophets in the land. 
and then one after the other was itemizing them and talking about what they were doing their diabolic things that they were satanists and blah 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 and you know went on and on and when it comes to be false prophets they are easier to spot than false teachers false teachers are more complex because it's spread it out it's not like false prophets false prophets are easy to catch if you see self glorification if you see that it will not do anything minister without a camera if you see that they sell paraphernalias from oils and and all these things if you see that they charge you for access and take money before you see them if you see all these things you know where they get you to eat strange things or tell you to bring your underwear to church and all those kind of funny things if you see them know your bank accounts and all those things you know immediately you are dealing with the babylonians if you see them bring out prayer points or things and command next minute watch as the fire will engulf and catch those things once you see all those things those are magic literally in the church those are done by falsifiers those are false prophets who are doing those things so they are easy to spot they are easier to spot but when it comes to mythical babylon they are more difficult simply because they are like christ they present the image of christ but there's a, a place where you catch them it's in the message of the lordship of jesus that's where and as times begin to go on because this series is going to run for many weeks and even months if possible because I will, I will reclassify it but at the end of the day it will still trace back to the fundamentals because son of Elijah is about mythical Babylon getting the rats out and get, setting the, the captives free simple and if we do that then we get the approval of the Lord in everything that we do so that's why I'm going to zero in into these things and as much as I would like to teach along these lines I have to also be careful not to teach too much because this thing is about exposing with fire and the prophetic is where the fire is and so since I am the inflamer or the flamethrower who brings this mandate I have to make sure it's all inflamed it has to be fire all the way through it can't just be a lot of intellectual solical representation that that's why when I share, I will tell you the encounters I had and then I will juxtapose it with revelation in God's written word and then I bring this, this baby home. That will be the approach for all the thoroughness of the materials we are bringing in. Why? Because it's very imperative that the principles and the things we teach line up with the kingdom and his righteousness so that at the end of the day, that which God has called his people to do, they will be able to experience it. As Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, he says, seek you first what? The kingdom and his right positioning and his righteousness and his right way of doing things and all these things that the Gentiles are breaking their heads to have and then I will give it to you. All these things that the Gentiles are clamoring for, I will let you have it. All these things that the Gentiles are pushing out, trying as much as possible to experience, I will let you enjoy it. I will let you experience it. I will let you, you know, be able to, to, to go through and then comprehend in fullness of it. Why? Because God has called us to have an experience, an encounter and to grow spiritually and be established in the kingdom and fulfill the purpose for which he has created us for. But unfortunately, we have an invasion. And that invasion is what we are trying to clean up now. That invasion is what we are trying to get out. That invasion is what we are trying to assault so that the kingdom of God can be accomplished, can be fulfilled, can be reached in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, you have to understand the dynamics of this. The woman who came to me, I told you that I was like a protege, came to me and was explaining to me the video. And then as I was talking to her about it, then she now played the video for me. And I I started watching the video. In this video, this man went on and on and he started labeling false prophets and false prophets like I said they are easier than false teachers and then he started mentioning them one after the other and started hitting them off the park and said this one and that one and that one and now this guy was almost journalistic in his approach because he sounded like a journalist but now I'm a Christian journalist and then he was doing investigative reporting and then he was explaining how these people are all Satanists how these people are this and that and he was you know you know because this was out on on YouTube and then he went on and on and I think he took out most of the prominent preachers who were in town at that time. Some of them had some of the largest churches and it was very, very aesthetic in that which he was deploying. And I listened to him because you see, when I want to listen, I muse over stuff. I resolve it. I listen and then I process. So I didn't just discount him. I just listened. And when I was done, I gave my own take to the lady and I said, but this is very interesting on what he's saying and all that. And he was so bold about it and he published it and literally dared any of them to invite him to come and have a facial confrontation and it will prove to them that they were satanists and the things we're doing that were not lined up with the scriptures and it went on and on so after listening to him i went to bed that night as it was the custom of all life to do and then first thing in the morning i think around 3 4 a.m in the morning i had an encounter and in that encounter i heard the voice of the spirit of the living god 
and he came very strong and he said now this man and the people that he mentioned and the things he talks about and the fact that they are this and that and all these are false prophets he said even though what he's saying is true and that first statement caught me he said even though what he's saying is true i said so what he's saying is actually true wow that means these people are really satanists these people are really false prophets now of course i knew quite a number of them were just a cabal of criminal uh, you know kingdom manipulators and soul traffickers and mutilators of destinies i knew those ones they were selling all the paraphernalia selling access selling everything getting rich you know buying their cars buying big cars buying fast cars buying you know and there's nothing wrong if you can afford the rose royce but at least do it on your own dime and you're with your own understanding based on your own faith but not by taking advantage of people who have nothing and claim that they have to pay you thousands of because the currency in that nation is rand and pay you thousands of rands to be able to get access to you because they were selling access doing everything selling water selling oil and they were making a lot of money so the lord spoke to me and said even though the things that these people are doing is not of me even though the way they are doing it is not of me even though the things he's saying is true he didn't even use the word may be true he said it is true he said but well, yet i will judge yet i will judge this supposed um individual who is a youtuber who is a communicator because i wouldn't call him a preacher because he never said he was a preacher he sounded more like a journalist he said i will judge him he said because i did not send him because i did not authorize him because i did not give him this assignment and that is the reason why i will judge him and when i got out of that vision i was scared for the guy i said wow so just because you are taking out people and you are speaking and you are hammering them and even though your information may be good and accurate yet you still have to be authorized so you still have to be authorized if you are not authorized you can't speak on those things if you are not authorized you are not sent and then when the lord told me this i was shaking up for the guy i was concerned for him and i said within myself wow so this guy is doing this thing outside the will of god he's operating and the lord didn't say i would look into the matter the lord said i would judge him that's a very strong term he said i would judge him because i did not send him i would judge him because i did not tell him to create this channel and then look at all these individuals now those were for false prophets and like i said the false prophets are easy to spot if you know what you are doing but now we have another group on youtube who are dealing with false teachers they prefer that term false teachers they also call false prophets too but they are mostly they like the term false teachers and these are the ones who they are more of doctrinal defenders they will never say anything wrong with the denomination where they came from those ones are the saints and then they go after the rest and of course their staple is usually the mega church guys and then the prosperity preachers those are their their staples and then once they go after them they start labeling them and start calling them falsifiers false churches false this once you have a mega church you're in trouble and once you are you teach any kind of message that tells people they will do well in life you're in trouble now i'm not here to dig into those messages it's really not my business and it's not my problem i'm only trying to say that i saw an encounter of someone in heaven while i was having an encounter in the throne room of the father with the very wisdom of god i saw there was an individual because we we're in that throne room and the wisdom of god was talking to me when all of a sudden the background changed and when the background changed i saw there were now individuals everyone was now standing and then i saw the sins of god on the right side of of jordan and then i saw all those who were on the left side the left side were not able to make it they were still on the other side some of them were called of god to do great things for god but they were still stuck on the other side of jordan and i don't know what kept them there it could be sin it could be unbelief it could be a lack of faith it could whatever it is but they have not crossed over they had left egypt but they were still stuck as it were in in their old ways of doing things and they were not able to cross over i was on this other side of those who had crossed over jordan and i saw a good number of saints who were there maybe in their millions because i couldn't tell the number i couldn't see the end of it but then the wisdom of god was with me right there and then i was listening to this guy and while i was listening to this guy this guy is a youtuber because i recognize him i know him actually i know his channel but i'm not going to go into 
because it's not about him it's about what he represents i would like to keep it more in tune with what he represents that individual so it's not about one person but a lot of people who are like this and there are hundreds of them and you know as it were there are quite a number of them lots of them now you don't know what they are are they preachers are they teachers are they journalists i don't know their classifications i don't i can't tell are they investigators i don't know i don't know but they, are, they seem to know everybody who is of the devil and who is not they seem to know everybody who's a falsifier and who is not they seem to know everybody and the problem is this they are not authorized they are not authorized you see as i'm trying to do the son of elijah i've, I've been given a mandate I would not do this thing except God had told me to do it. I have no interest in this, actually, to be honest with you. I have no dog in the fight. If people want to be falsifiers, that's their business. If people want to be killers, mutilators, eaters of destinies, that's their business. If people want to be abusers, I'm because I trust God's judgment. I trust judgment day will come and God will be able to deal with everyone. And everyone will get their fair portion. Clearly, that's what I believe. If you go to the book of chapter 9 of the book of Proverbs, the wisdom of God puts it right there. He said, oh man, he said, if you listen and do what you are told to do, it's for your good. But if you decide you don't want to listen, he said, you will, you will also repeat that same way. If you believe that you are sure of what you are doing, continue in it. Continue in it. At the end of the day, you'll get whatever is coming your way. Because God will judge everything. And you have to be careful because before God authorizes you, God has to elevate you. That means you can also do the same things those people are doing. That's why you have to be at a standard higher than them. And God will test you and try you and put you in very difficult situations. And the difficulty of those situations is where he will bring you into. Wherein do, that is what he will now utilize to be able to, to now decipher whether you qualify for you to become what that is. And it's not just an idea of you running with this. If you want to do politics, do politics. If you want to represent a denomination and their belief system and be a doctrinal defender, then by all means, be hired and stay within that parameter. But for you to now usurp a position and say you are now the standard that points out everyone who is sinning and who is not and points out everyone with names. You call their names, you call their churches, you label them. You put horns on their head. You seem to enjoy it. And you don't have any flinch of authorization. You can't tell me. I've listened to so many of these people because I did a little bit of research. After the wisdom of God showed me that individual that the ground opened and he was swallowed in. Why did the ground open and he was swallowed and then find himself on the other side? It's because that's exactly what happened to Abiram and the company that challenged Moses. The ground opened up and swallowed them. And then in this vision, I saw he was swallowed up and then he found himself on the other side. And he continued to speak, not knowing that he was no more on this side. He had now ended up on the other side. He was now on the other side of Jordan. And that was a dangerous place to be because now he became unrapturable. He now became condemned. You see, the same yardstick he used to judge others, you'll be judged. If you're a liar, you, you can't say people are lying. If you're a fornicator, you can't condemn those who are fornicating. If you're a cheater, you can't condemn those who are cheating. If you're a deceiver, you can't condemn those who are deceiving. There is a very high standard. It's a very, very high standard. Just because you are not doing the exact ministry they are doing doesn't mean you are not so liable. Because by the time God puts a microscopic glass over you, they will pick out so many things that are unbelievable. And Jesus says, why are you seeing the speck in someone else's eye when there is a whole log, there's a whole tree that is stuck in your own eye, but yet you don't feel it, but you seem to see the specks in other people's eyes. That's what Jesus said. Because this thing is a very dangerous thing. That's why I said many of them are playing with grenades. They are playing with fire. They are playing with explosives. Because they don't understand the dynamics of the, of the judgment that the Lord is brewing up for those who are operating outside these parameters and thinking that it's fair and it's okay for them to do what they are doing. These are dynamics of very deep things and we don't understand it. Many are times when I hear these things, I ask myself questions. Are we doing what we are meant to be doing? Now, someone may ask and say, but you are now coming to a place now where you want to start pointing out individuals and whatever. Not really. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to zero in on the spirit behind those things, not the individuals. I, I'm not going to be calling names. Now, I have had the situation, yes, when I was dealing with the prophets, where I mentioned a supposed African false prophet. Now, that individual was a poster child for false prophethood in Africa. He was the poster child. His name is T.B. Joshua. That individual was the poster child. I'm not the one who made him a poster child. He was already a poster child. He was everyone, BBC everywhere. More than, you know, 30, 40 women had come out to say that this man was sexually assaulting us, raping us on almost on a nightly basis. And he was doing this and he was a liar. And then his second in command came out and said, no, we were deceivers. We're all in together in this. We were doing this. And all those things were public. All those things were public. So I wasn't the one who made him a poster child. He was already a confirmed public deceiver, literally. 
and his data was out there and it was unrebuffable, it was irrefutable. So God had already made him a poster child. So I, all I was doing was pointing to the poster and say, look up at that poster, that was all. And he was the only person I pointed because he was already a poster child. So if God gives us a poster child who is overwhelmingly representable, whereby there are more than, not that you had a dream or a vision that this person is a devil, no, physical, physical, literal, manifestations so and if that is the case that's what i just point and say look at that picture that's all but, and even at that even if i do come on that platform i'm still legal why because i was authorized to do this i was sent to do this i was commanded to do this in short god gave me this command far back in 2021 i didn't start son of elijah my first release was in 2023 that was the first video i released on son of elijah and even at that i wasn't even talking about the falsifiers I was talking about other things. And then the Father came back again. The Holy Spirit came back again. Jesus came back to me. Jesus came and appeared to me in person. Appeared to me in person. 14th of July, 2023. He said, the things I sent you to do. And talking about son of Elijah and the specifics. Have you done it? And then I started giving him excuses. And he was upset. And then he walked away. And when he walked away, he made it very clear that he was coming back. And even though he didn't tell me the date, I already knew the date. And then I was scared and I said, no, I need to go and put this content out and start doing this. Why am I saying this? Because it's not something I want to do. I would rather just be teaching the word and be doing my thing in church and enjoying myself. Because I'm a teacher. I enjoy teaching a lot. I'm a prophet. Yes. I love that too. Apostolic content. Yes. I have that office too. Enjoy it a lot. But he made it very clear, this is the original assignment. Until this originality of son of Elijah is unleashed, every other thing will not count. That's what he said. And he's not playing with words. This is his mandate. And he was like, why did you ask to take delivery of the mandate if you won't do it? Or if you will not stand up to it? So I, I'm not here to be liked or appreciated. I, I don't have time for that. So, but I'm telling you, I'm authorized. I'm called to do it. I'm chosen for this. This is my assignment that I have to do it. I told someone a while back, I said, please let me do my job. And the person asked me a direct question. Did God tell you to do this? I said, yes. He told me, even in 2021, when he brought me and showed me the building, I said, 20% of the church is corrupt. And I'm sending you to go and get the sewage out. He told me, he showed me. He said, on this 20% side of the building is filled with sewage. And I've sent you. The father was standing there. Men of God were standing there, all in the spiritual realm. All of us were there. And he said, it's you that I've called to go into the trenches. So when people ask me, where are you? Where did you come from? I said, I've been in the trenches. That's why you didn't see me. I didn't just receive this thing yesterday. The time Elijah came to me was 2013. So technically, that is a bit now. This is like the 12th year from then. Now, before then, I've been in ministry for more than two decades. But I'm talking about when Son of Elijah was, was given, when the mandate was delivered. It was 2013. So it has been here a while. So what I've been doing for the last 10 years, doing what I do, praying, ministering, bringing out principalities, powers, bringing out territorial spirits, taking down entities, bringing down installations of wickedness, ministering and praying for people, setting the prisoners free, breaking curses. So I've been doing all that. But the essence of going after in a published content mythical babylon mystery babylon the rats that jesus spoke about are not undertaking that have not looked into that i did not even care to know what is there literally even though you had told me to do that i was still you know just doing those other things so i'm the one who is at fault for not bringing the content as quick as i should but i'm here now because i know what my work is the wisdom of God I had encountered with her 70 days ago and did not make any effort to publish it yet. Because when I listen to something, I try and digest it properly. I was there in heaven for my books to be marked. It's like I wrote a test and she's going through it to say, no, mm, 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 not perfect enough. Not because I was not teaching the word of life and giving out all the principles. I was doing a great job, but she was trying to fine tune the exactness of what she wanted me to do. Because a part of me still wanted to teach on the generality of the depths of that which I have. But she wanted me to focus, focus on the specificities of that which I've been exemplarily, executedly, called and put aside specifically for that was what she wanted me to do so that's the centrality of what i'm trying to do and that's why we are here to make sure son of elijah will 
address mythical Babylon, address the rats that are in the church, and then get the prisoners out. And we must never be confused with these people who are out there in the church, who are out there on YouTube and the social medias with hundreds or thousands of followers, and then pushing out, accusing every single person, left, right, and center, of being falsifiers. But if you notice, their, their background and their denominations are the ones that are right. And I always call them miraculous because if you follow them, nothing will work in your life. Nothing will happen. You'll be dead as a, as a doornail, literally. Because you'll just be there, nothing will be working, nothing will be moving on. Simply because they don't even know what you're talking about. No one authorized them, no one gave them this classification, no one gave them this mandate. And that's why I've gone to their videos to listen to every one of them. They will tell you why they are doing what they are doing. They say, why do you call the names? They will give you one scripture. Why do you do this? They will give you another scripture. Why do you do that? The Bible says, but they will never be bold to just say, God told me to do this. Because God never told them. None of them can say it. None of them can come out and say, God said I should publish this content attacking this one, this one, that one. None of them can say that because God never told them. If you are bold that God told you, say it. Say it so that it can be on record. And then you will be able to face judgment day. Then God will say, which day exactly and when did I speak to you? And I told you to do this because the wisdom of God has told me clearly, showed me and I saw that fellow who went down and then ended up on the other side. And now he was, he didn't know he had changed. He didn't know the ground under him had swallowed him up. He didn't know that he was stuck. He didn't know that he was now in a difficult place. He didn't know that things had changed. He didn't know. He thought he was still talking because he still saw the faces of Christians where, you know, he, so he was cool. But he didn't know that he was now on the other side of Jordan. And that's the church that won't rapture. The church in Jordan, on the other side, the left side of Jordan, rapture. They are the ones that will feast with the Antichrist. And they are the ones that will be in trouble when that day comes. They are the ones that will be left behind. And that's what I'm trying to tell you, please. I'm not saying, I'm not here to tell who to listen to, who not to listen to. But we are starting a new series on Son of Elijah for mythical Babylon, for getting the rats out, and for dealing with the prisoners who are out there. And I want you to pay very close attention because the dimensions and the depths of these things are going to literally explode as we follow through. I will leave it here today. I will leave it here. My name is Mac the Lion and I've been your host for Son of Elijah. I want you to listen and continue to listen to these things. Please do like, share, and subscribe and then let others be able to partake from that which you are listening to today also. Please if you want to be a part of what we're doing, you're very free to go to the description section to connect with us, both for international and local givers. If you want us to pray for you, if you want us to set you free, if you want us to administer to your destiny, please also go there. You'll see our email address. Please use it. Send us a mail. And then we'll give you our number. And then with that, you can be able to send messages to Son of Elijah and the mandate. And there'll be those who will be able to help you get beyond where you you are. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for enjoying this content. Thank you for being a part of what we are doing here. Thank you and I will see you in the next episode of Son of Elijah. Bye.